We're here at the 2023 Fall Biostock Investor Meeting, and I'm joined by Orexo CEO Nikolai Sorensen. Welcome, uh, Nikolai. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here. It's good to have you here. Um, uh, let's start with the basics. Uh, could you tell us more about Orexo and uh, uh, your main mission? Absolutely. So Orexo, we are a Swedish pharmaceutical company who are in a commercial stage. That means we are fortunate to have a commercial subsidiary in the U.S. where we sell our product Subsol for treatment of opioid use disorder. Opioid use disorder, that's really the mission for the company to find new and better treatment to help all of those who suffer from that disease. Uh, then on top of that, Orexo is also a very skilled pharmaceutical drug delivery and formulation company, and we have a new technology called Amalfox, where we believe we can have a new string of products coming out, also outside the space of opioid use disorder. But for the second part, we, we will look for more partnership than uh, promoting it ourselves. And uh, in terms of your uh, pipeline, um, could you tell us a little bit more details about the pipeline, what you have in the pipeline, and maybe something coming up? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're in a very, it's a very interesting week right now because we just filed, last Friday we filed with the FDA our next product, OX124, for treatment of opioid overdose. OX124 is more powerful than the products that are in the market today. Mm -hmm. uh, our next product, uh, or we have two products in pipeline, one is called OX125. It's also treatment for opioid overdose, but using a different uh, active ingredient than we have in OX124. So we will start that project now when we have completed the OX124 project. Then we have a product called OX640, which is an epinephrine product. So this is going to replace the injector EpiPen that people use when you have severe allergies and then risk dying from aller allergic shocks. Uh, and we've done a nasal spray out of that or a nasal powder formulation that you can use. That one is a typical example of a product where we believe we need to find a partner who is more uh, skilled in that area than where we are. So we are good at opioid use disorder, mental health diseases, but when it comes to allergies, we think we should work with companies who have been working in that space. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you mentioned partnerships. Um, how, how big of a factor are partnerships for your business concept? And uh, are you looking at any other partnerships uh, in, uh, coming up? No, I, I think Partnerships is, is a core part of, of, of Orexo. So this is where we started. We had a product called Abstral, which is still doing quite well in several markets uh, for treatment of opio of cancer pain. Mm -hmm. uh, we have several other products, a product called Etloire, which is also on the market for insomnia that is generating a, a constant string of, of royalties to Orexo. So this is important for us because we are too small to have a global presence. So partnerships will be important even for products within opioid use disorder. For example, Subsol, we promote that in the US, but we have a partner for Europe called Accord uh, Pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. And uh, just looking into the future a little bit, um, how do you see the market for opio opioid use disorders evolving and how will Orexo fit into that landscape? I think opioid use disorder is probably the most neglected, forgotten and hidden area for the pharmaceutical company. At the same time, it is the number one killer among young people in the US. It is the number one reason why life expectancy is going down in the US. It's not due to COVID. It's not due to cancer or heart diseases or uh, you can say unhealthy lifestyles. It's actually because of opioid use disorder. So we have about 10 million people in the U.S. who are misusing opioids, uh, of which about 6 million are you can say, so frequent users, so they're really into an addiction. And it kills more than 100,000 people every year. The scary part here is it's very hard to see what's going to stop that circle. We can come out with new treatments, better overdose treatments. But what we see is the drug cartels, they come out with new the variations of the existing drugs that are just more and more addictive and more and more dangerous. Uh, and I think that's the challenge for companies like Orexo is that we are one of the few companies who are actually there in the frontier trying to find new treatment solutions for these patients. So opioid use disorder, that's here to stay because people, unfortunately, there are some people who are prone to get addicted and opioids is an extremely addictive drug. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned that you're one of the few companies uh, within the, this specific field. Could you tell us a little bit more about the competitive landscape, actually, for Orexo? 
No, absolutely. I think as as uh, as a Swede and living in Sweden, we could be quite proud that two of the leading companies are Swedish. So another leading company is Camiros, who have a, a, a depot formulation, which we think is a great complement to so the day, daily treatment. And Camiros is doing great in Europe, and soon are going to launch with their partner in the US. Uh, the other big company is a British company called Indivia, who were the inventor, you can say, of the modern treatment using buprenorphine. Indivia also have a depot formulation and are working with a new rescue medication in the US. Uh, I think they are the most biggest branded competitors who actually do development in the space. Then you have a lot of generic companies because uh, some of the treatments like methadone and the early products within buprenorphine are all generic. So Mm -hmm. most of the large generic companies are also active, which Rex have been subject to, you know, we have been in patent challenges with two of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it, it, one of these patent challenges has gone in your favor. Uh, just briefly, could you tell us a little bit more about that and how this uh, impacts Orexo? Actually, two of them have gone in our favor. So first, we were fighting against activists who were then acquired by Teva. So we were fighting activists and Teva combined. And then well, now we're fighting Sun Pharmaceuticals. So we won in the district court during the summer. It, it was, what you can say, if it's such exist in, in a court patent trial, it was like a slam dunk. They Every single aspect of the trial was in our favor. So they didn't get any uh, any acceptance by the court from their argument. But then these trials always go into an appeal. So we're in an appeal process right now. But if I compare it to the first trial where we actually lost on one of the patents in district court and then got it overturned in the federal court, uh, this one is much more clear cut, I think, in, in the federal court. So the only concern I have here is actually more time that it's going to live with us for another year before we, we know at least. Uh, and then we will um, we'll see when if there's another one coming but i think the positive part of having one twice is it's very hard for next one to find a space that's not already been tested by these two major competitors activists and then later sun pharmaceuticals so for every trial you win this the mountain for a new generic to conquer is just getting higher and steeper so i think that is helping helping and strengthening our patent situation mm-hmm. That's a positive uh, progression, as uh, for sure. And uh, finally, uh, could tell us a little bit about Orexo's long-term goals. I, I think, like any other company, as a listed company, our our you say we need to to become a profitable company. We need to generate returns and grow for for the shareholders. Uh, I think we are looking into our niche space within opioid use disorder is an important space where I can see we have this. A uh, very nice portfolio coming up with Subsolve as the foundation. We're coming in with OX124, OX125, and we also have a digital therapy called Modia, which we think is a great complement to this portfolio. Uh, and we're looking at some new, completely new APIs in the same space in partnership with other companies, which could be interesting over time. That's, of course, a very long development timeline, but we're looking outside these established APIs. So I think opioid use disorder is going to be a very important revenue generator for the company. But what we also have is this unique nasal powder technology where we think we have a huge opportunity to develop new products, and and in particular within the space of biologics, where we, for example, have already tested on a vaccine Mm -hmm. that this is creating a much more stable vaccine which could potentially either be used as a, as a nasal powder or you could also use it as a storage for the vaccine, which doesn't need to be freezed. If everyone, I guess, can recall when Pfizer launched a COVID vaccine, it needs to be frozen down to minus 80 degrees Celsius, which is very difficult for a logistic chain. So if you can find another way to keep these sophisticated vaccines into more room storage-like temperatures, I think that would be a great progress. And I'm quite convinced we could be a part of, of that game in the future also. Mm-hmm. Well, we definitely look forward to following Orexo along this way. And uh, thank you so much for joining us for the event today. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you.